I'd like to give an overview of what I'm trying to do. First and foremost is an assumption by me that uh, most of you who are here are either uh, startups or what we normally define as small entrepreneurs. And uh, this entire presentation is meant for technical entrepreneurs. So it is for people who are into new startup companies. We, we are not uh, talking about people who can raise uh, IPO of 100 crores, 200 crores. We are talking about people who are finding it difficult to get 50 lakhs. Okay, so let's uh, understand that. And obviously, uh, as it uh, says, it's a hands-on guide. I, I, I think you will appreciate that there is no point in my suggesting to you, say you run up into a legal problem, that you get somebody like Gopal Reddy to handle your case in the Supreme Court. You just can't afford. So obviously, we, we, the, the entire presentation is uh, based on uh, you, you being hands-on with your ideas, products, processes. I, yesterday, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, not a lot, at least half a dozen people asked me, you know, I have ideas and I, I don't know which product to select. So, a uh, lot of uh, uh, you have asked me as to, uh, you know, I have a lot of product ideas and I, I don't know what to select and how do I go about it and things of the sort. Uh, please understand that you are the part of the majority. I mean, I'm not talking majority in the sense of majority as a majority, but majority of people who are today entrepreneurs. They also started the same way. They also had a lot of ideas. They also didn't know which would really work. And uh, so th there's an entire process which uh, has to come into play. And uh, some of the processes I am... Uh, putting up here. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> the idea is, uh, I, I was uh, in, a, in a long drawn conversation yesterday afternoon with one of you and uh, saying that this is my idea and how do I go to the market, but it's the other way around actually. <coughs> you know, like you really have to first take a look at the market and then <coughs> sort of identify who are the people who would be your probable users. You know, one of the things which uh, I keep hearing, and uh, this is, uh, I think, also true for most of you, is that, you know, I have a great technology idea. Fantastic. I can patent it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you are aware that a huge amount of such patents have no commercial value. And uh, right at this point where we are sitting and discussing, we are discussing about something that I can do, you can do, which has a commercial value. I think we agree on that. It's important to realize that technology is not the business. Technology is the enabler for the business. I, I think this distinction must be very clear in our minds. So once we realize this, that we are essentially accessing the market as my input being the enabler component. So now I have to really look into the business component of what I am trying with my technology to enable. Right? So, uh, when, when we uh, talk of probable users, obviously the 
the person who is thinking of going into that sort of business must be very clear before he gets into it, the who could probably use it. There is, there is no point in spending money on your innovation or whatever model or something that you make and then trying to find out who would be probable users of that. Well, by the time you have wasted a lot of money and time. This sort of uh, follows, you know, the point number two follows uh, point number one because in, in many cases, uh, I wouldn't say in all cases, I mean one great exception is the mobile phone. The, prior to 1982, uh, if I'm not wrong, that is, of course the inventor of mobile phone never saw the product. So let's assume that he did see. So prior to 1982, there was no mobile phone. So obviously, the uh, second part uh, really wouldn't uh, apply to mobile phone fully, but it does apply to telephony. The, the person who is in the business of mobile phone, he has, and he has to understand that uh, this is part of telephony. It, it is, is not something which has come from the Mars. It is un, it's not that unique. So similarly, in, in the case that where you are at the moment, where you uh, are thinking of bringing in a product or process into business, you have to have a very, very clear idea that the same activity, how is it being done today? You know, I, 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 I believe that, uh, you know, there are times when uh, I, I don't know whether, you know, the very interesting case study in Bombay that uh, there was a, a, a service, a hovercraft service running from Gateway of India to Vashi. And uh, it, you know, no traffic and et cetera, et cetera. So the whole thing failed. Because uh, ultimately, people thought that it was too expensive a service to save that sort of time. So it, it is important. I mean, you spend that sort of money. Of course, f fortunately, in this case, the government spent the money. There's no individual. But suppose you spend that sort of money, and then uh, you you look into you have not looked into the activity as closely as you ought to have, and you put it into service and people really don't want it. They would want it probably at a point of time. At that point of time, it's important to understand that the market as we see it is dynamic. So what you, you cannot uh, put a product or process into the market where the market is not ready for it. And as a startup company, we are too new to move the market to our way of thinking. You, you understand? We, we, we are uh, too new into, into trying to do that. So it's important to realize that what we want to do today can, with some effort, it's, I'm not saying that everything is pit pat and you just bring your product and it will sell. No. With some effort, you can break into the market. So this analysis on your part has to be there. And believe me, a lot of it has to do with you, the how you see it and whether you are comfortable with the people who will be using it. See, your comfort level is also important. You must be able to reach out to those people. If you cannot reach out, if you feel that I cannot reach out to those people, then that's not your business. So again, the third point follows the second point. And how do you think, why, why do you think that the user would find your solution acceptable? So the user would find your solution acceptable because of the following reasons. And what are the, one, one of the major factors in the following reasons is again you. Because it is you who is providing the product or service. So you again see the entrepreneur himself at any point of time is there he is a nodal point. So what say an entrepreneur A is thinking and entrepreneur B is thinking maybe on the same product does not mean that the entrepreneur A and B will equally succeed and what we hear a lot of time is there will be a lot of competition. 
I don't agree to that. There is competition, but it doesn't follow just because entrepreneur A and entrepreneur B makes the same product that there is a lot of competition. There could be, but that doesn't follow. What follows is the, the who is more approachable in the market sense and who knows his customer better. So that is the solution to what product or service that you want to bring to the market. So we come to the first point, we elaborate a bit on that, who is the probable user? This is very important. This is very important. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, suppose you were to sell exercise books. So the probable user would be anybody who is a student. I, I think that logic wouldn't work because uh, if, even if it is so that anybody is a student, do you have the wherewithal to reach such a large group? So let us also understand that when you are thinking in terms of the user, it is important that you find the segment which you think that you can cater to. You, you understand? You, you have to find that segment which you think that you can cater to. There is no point in my telling you that Hindustan Lever caters to this segment. You and I, we are not Hindustan Lever. We cannot cater to what Hindustan Lever is catering to. So when, when we talk of specific segment, it doesn't matter even if the segment is small or you choose a small segment. At, at the end of the day, it is important that your business succeeds. It's not important to what I say. It's important that whether money is coming into your company. So that is a choice the entrepreneur has to clearly make. Obviously, again, this is an obvious thing. I mean, if you look at a segment, say you look at a, a segment which is, as I said, a student segment. Let's, let's continue with that, a student segment. So if that's within the student segment, who would really be your user? Would it be uh, more uh, children in kindergarten? In the sense that, with the, will, will, uh, you see, you, you need to have more orders. So will kindergarten children, because they keep on scribbling, they will be using more of your product? Or will it be primary, mid, college, what? Now, technology, so when we are talking about exercise books, obviously the user does not need a lot of technology to use an exercise book. But when you are talking of technology, whether it's a mobile phone, or a computer, obviously this part that who will be the user in that segment becomes of critical importance. You just cannot wish that I will cater to this group of people and they can use it. You also have to find out whether that group of people are trained or can be trainable and then only can they use it or they are already trained and they are just looking for a better alternate. Speak to people. Don't speak to your partners and all that. Partners are there. You can keep on talking to them. Speak to them. Go and speak to them. It, it, is, a, it is a lot of hard work, but very important. Very important. You, you especially for people like us who are Startups, average, I'm talking average, it is 25, 30 years. We really are not people known, you know, in the common sense. It, when we, when a person like you go and speak to people, you will immediately get a sense of what they are wanting. It, it, it will happen. 
the more you speak, the you broaden the spectrum, more you speak, you will find it is happening. And that will help you to make the choice. Can, can anybody here, I mean we have some entrepreneurs here, can anybody here give me a reason why I have written this line? Why speak to a diverse group? That means a group which may not use your product. Can anybody? Yeah. Uh, it will help you mitigate uh, your risks. See, In what way? Uh, see, basically, if you are trying to have a market, uh, let's say my 80% of users are coming from one particular segment, yet I have put efforts to have the 20%. It's costing me a little more than actually there is a lot of profit in the 80% where I can completely focus and make my 100% in that segment. The problem with that approach is the day that goes or the risk that is there with that particular group uh, will increase for the business in terms of uh, the sustainability or tomorrow, say so for example, you know, I have a dealer, 80% of my business comes from that area or that particular thing. And I didn't diversify into other small dealers around, even though they're giving me one, two things. Tomorrow, if somebody else pitches, my competition pitches for this particular dealer, I will lose everything. If tomorrow he's going to negotiate with me, the, uh, the point of negotiation for, for him will be in a higher point compared to if I have three, four options. When he's, he's pushing me too much, I can say to him that, you know, I have three, three options, not just one option. You know, I have others also working with me. I have a certain, even pricing, dealership, various things. Diversification helps you not only in markets, in other probable ways like dealerships and all other things. Quite right. I, as a matter of fact, this, yeah, please. Uh, it's important to talk to diverse group of uh, segments because it's not really straightforward to identify what your target segment is in the first place. It may, in some, time, in some cases, it might be as trivial but in some cases, it, you, you never know what your target segment is. You might have a perception of what your target segment is, but you still have to ascertain and speak to a diverse group that, in, that it in fact is. There might be some other tar target segment that is more interested than what you thought. So it's still important to ascertain that factual data and then uh, you know, make a valid judgment of what your target segments are. I, I think this is well thought of, but can you give me a, a process to identify this diverse group? Yeah, I think once, once you uh, uh, arrive at a target market, you list down the target segments, and then one, once you have a list of target segments, you narrow down to a, ta you, know, uh, a, a ta you narrow down to a particular uh, target segment. So the broad list of segments that you have list down from your target market should be a sample space of your diverse group, I guess. And anybody else wants to? Yes. Diverse group can give different dimensions to our ideas and thinking. And they, so it can add a lot of value also sometimes if you speak to the people who are away from the industry. So sometimes it will really give a different dimension to the thinking and the concept. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one last point to add to that. Uh, diversification also helps you uh, if you have a template product to actually move the product or design the product or the feedback system can be better and the product can be self-sustaining after that point. It helps you self-sustain the product as well. Yeah, yeah, please. One more thing is that it can be help in the long run. Maybe he can uh, diversify his product in, the, in that line. Yeah. Now, uh, I think uh, most, most of you agree that all the suggestions that have come uh, really are very good and this is primarily why we need a diverse group. But I just want, want to add a word of caution here. You see, when uh, we talk of startup companies, we are essentially talking in terms of one or two person companies. Now, as uh, I think uh, is needed, uh, is needed because we have again a diverse group here to understand what does that one or two person company do. One or two person companies, one man is normally little more knowledgeable in technology part. The other person is more adept in administration. So that is normal. It may not be. Maybe both are very technology, but normally that is how it works out. 
Now you can understand every day there are in a small company there are 101 problems. As I normally say that you know the expense of the company starts the moment that fellow rolls up his shutter and switches on the light because he is paying for the electricity. So in, in a company of that nature you know you do not have time to get into all this analysis. This analysis what you say is fine is fantastic I mean you really can do it nothing like that. So what does a startup company do? Simple talk to everybody just go and talk. I mean if, if you if you see there is no you want something some answer by evening you know you when you come back like your chap your friend whoever it is with you in the company he comes at 7 o'clock in the evening the first thing you ask him come on what happened? This is normal thing everybody would ask. And that fellow will say, I have made an analysis and all that. The other fellow will get cheesed off. He says, What analysis? You know, because somebody is, you know, he is probably, the other fellow is probably thinking, you know, I don't have no money in the bank, which is very common. So we need, we need answers like these. We, we, we need, we need the classical approach also, but that classical approach should not tie a person like me down. Where it is tying me down, you just cut it out. Because at the end of the, you know, in the, in the long term, we are all dead. So, it, it nothing can be long term. It Something has to happen. I, I, I always tell my people that what you have done today is fine, but I thought it would have happened yesterday. So, when we are talking of startup companies, startup companies are people who want things happening now. We cannot, how can a startup company which is, you know, finding it difficult to get funds, finding it difficult to get their customers, get even one or two customers that they have had, they are howling over the telephone, this is not correct, this installation you have not done and this and that. You, that man, however intelligent, however educated he is, he cannot sit down and do an analysis. That is a startup company. He is really out of a garage. Right? Our whole, whole concept of incubators is that people like us who have started in a garage, incidentally I did start in a garage. So people like us who have started in a garage, we think today from the government side, no, let us give them a better place. So that is the incubation concept today. That we give them a physical, decent place to work in. So why do we do that? Because otherwise, the chances of success of his business is even lower. Because even a garage today in a city like Bombay it will cost you in astronomical terms. So this is the reason when we talk of diverse group, First, as I said, talk to everybody. What does this diverse group do? The diverse group by them, by the very, you, you may know them, you may know them by face and things like that. The diverse group will come out with some of gems. You will be surprised. And you have no time again to do a market analysis, a market research. Unless again, as I said, that you are one of those companies who has got a VC funding of a couple of million dollars. Now, again, we have some entrepreneurs here. How many of, how many entrepreneurs did you have? Quite a few, quite a few, wonderful. So, how do you deal with criticism? Yeah. Take whatever positive input is there and turn the rest of it. No, but I, I'm, I'm just asking you when, say, a person like me criticizes you, what product? Sir, what product you have It's not a product. This is a product. Kya aap? So how do you how do you react to that? Sir, yeah, actually kal hua. Kal jab maine aapse baat ki, uske baad mein actually hua. But then I thought over it. <laughs> See, we are so much about the APIs and all that, you know. Uh, I said, ठीक He has given his input. Maybe I have a bigger picture which I have not communicated. So okay, my facts are with me. This is the path I have to travel, and I have to travel. Okay. Uh, <clears throat>
and any anybody yeah. wants to defer no. to what he is saying no we take comments and analyze it so we are going to every evening we sit and uh, we see what is the positive and negative comments we got <coughs> so by making a note of that we are going to analyze and of course we will take the essence of it and we will try to overcome if any positive comment is there criticism is the stage of success when i have started my own business of wellnesses everyone says that it is not not a product it is just like it is a used in a window now at present i am doing my business throughout the country uh, with the turnover of more over than 1.2 crore what is the product wellnesses wellness very good very good okay uh, yeah uh, to be very honest uh, <laughs> it wasn't easy uh, there have been instances where uh, am i selling the right thing i would go back and do this so uh, and then uh, i would retrospect how can i uh, it's it, it all boils down to one thing what does the customer want end of the day some people like your service but do not like some aspects of it and uh, actually uh, looking at those aspects and trying to improve is what it is about very true i yeah. think what she says is very true yes yes uh, i want to do all of uh, the things it was the people said but i get pissed off <laughs> i just yeah I, i think that is very fair what he says uh, i i you know looking back uh, i don't remember but i true must have i mean one thing i do remember my entire family telling me are you have to a mind doing a business with all the sort of job offers you have i mean you you must you must be mad so yes i i think what he says is also true i mean you just get yeah, i don't know about the idea. entire thing of uh, criticism being leveled but uh, you know uh, the thing is that uh, there are two types of people in the world do you know anybody knows i'm not saying man and a woman no <laughs> as person human beings there are two types yes is it risk taker and uh, risk averse anybody else two types of people only there two do you know three two and a half nothing two types of people some people world. love to just criticize you for the no 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 ma'am there is names two types of people in the world i'll tell you uh, yes man and yes. person follows yes ma sorry no. positive attitude persons negative attitude persons are introvert persons yeah, yeah. are extra yes yeah yeah leaders and followers so are pessimistic okay. see uh, the, i mean uh, just let me tell you the two types of people are historical fact the raja and the praja exactly <laughs> any nobody can doubt yes, no criticism on that there is historical fact this raja and the praja even how brilliant you this our birbal was but he used to sit one step below emperor akbar he was not sitting on the same platform so raja and the praja the employer and the employee no leader beater kuch nahi the leader is a pleader <laughs> He is pleading for his cause, but an employer is not pleading for his cause. The employer is the fellow who gives the bread and butter for the other fellow. So you are here as the employer. So when criticism is there, you must understand you are the raja. Your job is to listen to that. If you cannot. then you are not an employer please remember business does not work <coughs> unitary a fellow cannot say that i am the business no he needs people so when you employ people you are the employer if you are the employer you are the raja because you are the provider for your employees How many people here run a business for more than ten years? Hands up. So, <clears throat> would you agree with me what I am saying? Yeah. So you must understand a person who has run his business more than ten years. For ten years, whether it is two or two thousand people, every month he knows. Saab, हमको पैसा देने वाला है. Very important. 
I will tell you a very interesting story which happened. I came out of university and as I said garage. So somebody advised me that you should have a typist to type. So I said I don't know whether my business will run out this evening. How can I employ a typist? So after a lot of thought, I employed a typist. I am paying him a princely sum of 400 rupees in the year 1972. So, but every evening I have to think that tomorrow this business may close down. So one day some few people came into my, that small little garage. So I thought something has gone wrong and they have come to beat me up because they were looking like, you know, gundas. So <laughs> I said, yes, what can I do? He said, you were very nice. They, they were very nice. They said that, you know, this gentleman is working for you. So I said, there's something has gone wrong with him. That is why they have come now. So I was racking my brain as to, suppose there's a problem, what to do? I have, I have no idea what to do. Then they said that this guy was to get married to the other fellow's daughter. So they wanted to come and see whether he's really an employee here. So after they went away, after they saw he was an employee, I was wondering what sort of people, I also don't know whether this job, my business will run till tomorrow morning and that fellow has come to see whether he's an employee here. But that strengthens my argument of the employer-employee. So please remember all of you who are sitting here, you, your mindset is quite in variance to the rest of us who are employees. Absolutely. If your mind is not, you will be miserable as an entrepreneur. Miserable. Maybe you will make money, maybe you will not, maybe your business will close. I don't know. I am not a soothsayer, so I don't know. But you will be miserable. So I, please remember as a Raja, you are the Raja. So Raja has to listen to all criticism from the Praja. All. It helps the business also, but I will say more than that, it helps you to build the business. It helps you as a person, helps you with the change of personality to build the business. So we come to the third part of uh, the, what, what, uh, so this is what uh, was the uh, third part of uh, the first slide. Uh, now we come to the uh, product definition. So you see what I have tried to do is that rather than get into a product or process mode, I, what I find uh, not only here everywhere that I go to, what I find is that we as startup companies would like to talk about my product. You know sir, I have built this. So what do you think? It's so very difficult to say. How do you say? I mean, so what I have tried to do here is that how are you prepared to go to the market? You follow? I mean, are you both from the point of view of your business structure? From the point of view, you as a person, very important. As a Takno Pruna, as from the point of view as a, as a person, are you ready to go to the market? <laughs> now, the third part, we come to the product. What is user friendly? I mean, this is something we keep on hearing and hearing <coughs> and hearing. What is user friendly? As, as a as a startup company, you have a product which you claim to be user friendly. Can anybody again describe uh, what would you say? One, one point, don't tell me three, four, five points. No, this is user friendly. Anybody who didn't say, no, no, ah, yeah, come on, here. If the same product were to be developed by the user, you would do it in the same way. You would prefer it to be in that way. Same good. Library. This is a good, good definition. Yes. In our product, we say it is a click and play. Sorry? In our product, we say just click and play. Click and play. Yeah, so it means the same thing. Yeah. A short learning curve. Yeah, so, so basically we all agree that the user friendly is that a product which as he rightly said, the customer if he had designed it would have been in that fashion. But obviously it is not. Even the DVD that you buy for your home is not 
user friendly. So, there is a big uh, hiatus between what we as technical people would say user friendly and uh, we as a customer would say user friendly. Now, as an entrepreneur, how do we bridge that? Because that, that is critical to my market. How do I bridge that? What, what will help me to, uh, to say that, uh, you know, no, I am user friendly. How do you bridge that? Now, if you think about this and if you think about your product, which you thought that this is the product I will bring to the market. And now, when you are talking of user friendly, obviously you are thinking of your customer, you will find your answer. What answer? Whether that product which you thought was a hot shot idea of yours is really the product which should go to the market. Am I right? So, you, you see how, how the things get tied up. You have a product, nobody die, denies, is excellent, is an excellent product. And then, but you want to sell it. So, you have a customer and you want the customer to feel this is user friendly. And obviously, you interacting with the customer and the customer is really not happy with what you have given him. So, in this entire process, this is an entire process. So, if you see you are speaking to the people I said, you speak to these people, you, you, you must have direct contact with these people. In this entire process, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are identifying your product. Do you follow? You have a product which is you think is a hot shot, but your customer does not think. Your customer says, Ho sakta hai, bahut hai. Hum se nahi ho sakta hai. I, I just cannot use it. You have failed. If the customer says that, he will not buy. But it helps you to identify instead of you trying to break your head, now, whether it should be this, whether it should be that, the customer is giving you that feedback free. That look, this is not going to sell. Maybe then you will start thinking, maybe I should not have that, you know, according to you again in court, a cutting edge technology stuff there, probably I will bring down my technology a bit. And then that fellow says, haan sahab, ye theek hai. This is what I want. Can you give me an example of this? And any product that you know which uh, yeah? Yeah, uh, it is actually a product which we did it ourselves. Basically, uh, we wrote a uh, business analysis software for the uh, Pune police back in Pune. And uh, the police, like only like a very few people could use a laptop there. Uh, so the people like, you know, the ACP level and things like that. So we wrote a tool and we made it as simple as possible. You know, you just had to click three buttons and you would get your reports, whatever they wanted to run. And uh, we explained the entire thing to them and all. And uh, he said, fine, this is, you know, this is what I want. But once we go back to the office, we get a call saying that, okay, I've pressed the open button. Now how do I select a file? You know, and we are like, okay. <laughs> So after all this, uh, we realized that, you know, it's not as simple enough. So like we had to like do a lot more other things to make it just like one button. So we had to tell them, okay, click this button and everything will happen automatically. And for that, we had to like bring everything down quite a bit. So this is from my own experience. You know, I was uh, at one time uh, a constituted attorney in a company which used to make one of the leading music systems in the country, Cosmic Stereo Systems. And I was also a part of the R&D team. Now, being a techie, <laughs> the system was fantastic. I mean, it was the best system available in the country. So, being a techie, I wanted the system to be very versatile. So, you can use a microphone, you can do uh, stereo recording, 
you can play simultaneously and when you do a stereo recording you must do monitor we call it line in line out monitors so the, if you do a line in line out monitor you know the what sort of recording you are doing you know whether the recording is losing frequencies recording is uh, having uh, external noises and all that now this was used uh, in the, the professional amplifiers this was also used in programs where ravi shankar would come and play and things like that but what happened was that they will all buy these people who do the program they will buy our equipment every time there is a program they will tele telephone us to send a technician to fit it up for them however so we explained to them it was really nothing much because they were all numbered they had their codes they had we had put in the jacks and everything but it is in a sab or send somebody so ultimately you know we did away with all those facilities many of those facilities there is a no mobile phone for senior citizens they find it pain to receive sms read sms or to locate a missed call uh, it's easier for the younger generation to locate them through the menu true but very true then the uh, again as i said as we, as we discussing the first point we come to the second point now in in the case of a product it is very important to understand that is for the entrepreneur that really is his, his product is in the field for x number of months is there in the field is not lying on his bench his test bench is not a test is really has to be on the field and if it is not there then he has to seriously see why it is not there he has to identify people or groups who would really be using it so you see at as i said we used we started with something called which segment now if you have identified your segment it is important that in that segment you also identify groups which will be using it for testing because without that if you are going to make an investment and go to the market any anything can happen you can succeed also as i said that we are not sooth says but chances of failure are very high very very high and the test part of the uh, product is not something which uh, the customer says because you are talking to the customer so you are hearing what the customer says but you you need to put the best of your skill to formulate what you want to hear from the customer regarding the product because that is the technical part there are two parts as i said you are enabling technologically enabling your business so the technology part cannot fail if it fails then what are you enabling so, so the you need now once you are in a test mode of your product you need feedback on technology and that format again is a format which has to be user friendly you if, if you if you make a format which the other person doesn't know what to write even if he wants to you lost it so you need both you need at one stage you need to interact with people at large diverse group as we were talking about you need to talk to people as i said just go and talk to people and now you need to identify groups in that segment who will be really testing your product that that's absolutely critical to the success of your product you see like my friend there he gave this thing to the pune police i don't know did you get the money for their software yeah. after how many months no basically it's not a government project it's like for this particular individual only so oh, for the individual yeah. but normally as you know what happens many of us who have done business that if your product is not up working up to satisfaction then you don't know when you will get your money at the end of the day we need that money also you cannot plan out i mean you think at one time that my money is going to come in 6 months then something goes wrong he say nay nay you correct this and only then i'll pay once he says that you don't know when you'll get that money 
then what do you do? So all that you have to take into account when you are going to launch this product. And I think I have also touched the last point, how direct is your interaction with such groups. This has to be absolutely a direct interaction. There is no other way. You, you have to find those groups, you have to have interactions with, with those groups. You see, the market, if, if you look at the market, the market is very, very qualitative in nature. It, it is not something which is, a, is an object, it is not something that you can see as such, you perceive it as such. So in that market, if you are trying to be there, one of the players in the market, it is important that you have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with people in that market. And that has to be on a continual basis. Maybe I would say the day I as an employer, I as an entrepreneur would think of starting something new, from that very day I should be also in the market. And it's easy, it's easy. When, when you go to buy something, you are the customer, you are not the seller then. So if you can work on that, that look, as a customer, you, you have access to all the counters because you are a customer, people will answer your queries also. So if you can, you have access to that facility which is easily available to all of us, use it, use it. You follow? Use that. So ultimately, what did the policeman say? He liked your product. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we made some modifications after a couple of days and then uh, he could use it. So, I mean, the product did what it was supposed to, <coughs> only he couldn't initially, you know, figure out how to open file. I mean, basic Windows things which, you know, we thought anybody could do. So, we had to like eliminate even those things and, you know, uh, streamline the process. So, eventually he did, I mean, they are using it actively or whatever we did. You got a repeat order? Yeah. yeah. Very good. So, what do you think, what do you think the user would find? How did, why do you think the user found your solution acceptable? Uh, because it solved a very basic problem which they were facing and uh, it was actually a, like the data analysis they would do would take them 5 days and using our system it takes them about 20 seconds right now. So that was a big difference to him, you know, so he could, he spent that much time to learn the system because it saved him so much time and we told him that is the easiest it can get, you know, after that it can't get any easier. So. Uh, he yeah, made 20 seconds what, uh, in five, even if you find a solution in 5 seconds, if you register with him, you should have asked him that. Pardon? If you have found a solution which, 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 is, which is the lead time of 5 seconds, will it register in him? So 20 seconds is fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Again, we come to the word user friendly. User friendly is like a nemesis, does not leave you. And the reason is very simple. If you do not have a satisfied customer, you have no market. As, as simple as that or as complicated as that. Fine. Nobody likes cu customer to howl, na? but that is again part of the business. Customers will howl also. Price. Price. So, what do you say about price? We will come to price. Other features. Now, you see, it, as I said, that the market is essentially extremely dynamic and uh, your product should or would have features which you think are, you know, very positive additions to what is available today. And uh, I think that most of us here 
would agree to that that you know the product he or she has developed has quite a few of those features. So, but if you again make an analysis of those features and try to understand whether those features are really what the customer wants, you are again in a closed cycle. You really do not know whether they want it, whether, whether it is going to with those features will it make it more user friendly or less user friendly. So, the user friendly part becomes the key to the success or failure of your product and processes in the market. We will come to these uh, issues a little later. Okay, so, now we have discussed enough about uh, what uh, all this is about and where it is leading us and things like that. So, we come to this point that we will now go ahead and do it. <coughs> what is your market strategy? Will your company have its own marketing team? Anybody here who is running a business with his own marketing team? How many people in your team? 14. Very good. How old is your company? 3 years. 3 years. Very good. Yeah. How many people in your company? 6. six. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. More than 10 people. How old is your company? Ten, more than 10 years you said, no? But this 3 years, 14 people is laudable, laudable. You give support services, the, uh, that is a separate team. Uh, I integrated couple of them with that, uh, see, the people who uh, do appointments okay. also. The people who do appointments and uh, first interaction with the customer also end up supporting him after the closure and everything okay. is done. Okay. Okay. So, I kind of use them for both yeah. services. For fences, I do not think you need support. You do need, I do not think so. You, you, you are into some uh, support support yeah, services? Sure. Support services, but they are separate team? Yeah, they, they take care of both, but there are two uh, telesupport is there. there. So, you have a separate support team? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> without, without uh, I am not asking you to reveal a uh, uh, lot of data in terms of money. Will you tell this audience how much it costs approximately to have a 14 member team? See, uh, if you add up the cost of travel. Everything, everything. I should add everything and yeah. then put it. It will cost you about 1.8 lakhs to 1.9 lakhs. Per month. Now, <laughs> so uh, you land up with an overhead of nearly 22 lakhs. Yeah. A year on markets. That's just the team. I, it does not talk of promotion. It does not talk of advertisement. Nothing. It does not talk of freebies. Are my entrepreneurs ready to do that? Twenty-two lakhs. Yeah. Twenty-two lakhs. Sorry? As a corollary, on a billing of what? No, no, it is not a question of, you know, it is it's a, a billing uh, he will do, but he has built a team which uh, where his product requires this support, this 22 lakh fixed overhead support is required month in and month out. No, I will explain to you what is the question. The question is, even if your business cycle dips, he cannot chop that team. That is the question. So, I, I knew what you were going to say. <laughs> I said, even if your business cycle dips, you cannot chop. Because you chop, chop a marketing team, you are dead. Because you cannot create a marketing team overnight. You understand? Yeah. It is a cycle, no? So, it has gone down. So, gone down for 6 months, 8 months. You do not know. And now it is on the upswing again. You do not have people. So, everyone is to himself. I mean, he he's designed his business and he I am sure he's taken adequate care to see that uh, 
he can support this sort of activity with this sort of funding. You are very right that he has a certain level of billing, otherwise he cannot do it. But it is also a question of sustainability. You see when, when you are making a project, it is like saying that you build a house. You have a plot of land which somebody has given you, your ancestors or somebody. So, large plot of land, one acre. You, you can only build a house which you can first and foremost afford in terms of cost of building and also cost of maintenance. Business is very similar to that. So, you build a business which you can afford at the moment to set up and maintain because nobody knows whether you are uh, gestation period will be 6 months. I spoke to somebody this month, this morning and uh, he said that uh, he is broken even in 5 months. I think that is phenomenal, do not you think? I actually want to share about that. Yeah. Uh, this 14 member team, we used to be about a 4 member team when I started and we were now 48 people team. In that, that 14 member team, the new marketing team came about a 1 year ago. Before that, there were some people doing it, but as a structure, it came after two years. You know, I, I had to learn through mistake. As if you are looking at starting off, it's a very good thing to take the team up front and move forward. That's my advice. Anyways, uh, what I was trying to tell is if this 14 member team for me, it took me, after I took them, it took me about four months or five months to break even at the same point. I was already doing well, but once this team came, that overheads of their thing broke even in another four or five months. It's a very good process to do. See, so you know, this is a, a learning experience for all of us. So it, it can happen, it cannot happen also. In his case, it was like, yes, please. Uh, I have a question about uh, uh, whether we should be focusing on core competency or diversify into different aspects of business. Like uh, my firm, it's primarily a technology firm. It's a B2B solution, and we are almost through with the product, and uh, we are we have started building on uh, marketing and sales front right now. So right now, it's just me who is doing the marketing and sales. But we are in a dilemma whether to you know uh, build a team for a marketing and sales, or focus on our core competency, which is delivering innovative products, and then outsource the you know marketing and sales aspect to expert in those domain who have the network reach and sales experience in B2B. So, that is the dilemma I am facing. No, it all, uh, I mean, a, a simple answer to that, which, which answer is not simple. But I am saying a simple answer to that is, you have to identify from where is your cash flow. I mean, uh, you see, at the end of the day, you see, just think about it, he has got a 14 member team. You heard what is his overheads in the 14 member team. He, he is a very sensible businessman. He has reserves to go over a bad patch, okay. He has built that reserve before he has put those 14 people there or maybe in the process of putting those 14 people there. So this is a question which we cannot answer for you. This, this is something which will you can answer for yourself. True. I, I mean, there is a, I think there is a different dimension to it as well apart from the cash management uh, uh, aspect of it. Because what I feel is, you know, even if you have the cash flows to manage your marketing and sales team, it's also about the broad direction and the vision that you are focusing towards. You know, you know, if you have one. No, no, I, 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 let me again remind this whole group: we are talking of new startups, or at most, we are talking of people who are in business for three years. And then, you know, there are people here who are in business for ten years. I am in business for thirty-eight years. What applies to me? cannot apply to you, obviously. At the same time, what even whatever process I have gone through and what I can do today, not, not in talking in terms of money, talking in terms of markets I can access. I can access a market in 5 minutes. I will stop you here.